Realty income is one of the most popular REITs in the world and it's pretty simple to understand why. The REIT has managed to generate 15% average annual total returns for the past 25 years and then on top of that it has also managed to grow its monthly dividend payment for also over 25 years now even including the great financial crisis and the pandemic nothing could stop realty income. This is great for investors who bought shares of realty income decades ago but is it still a good investment opportunity today? Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in rate investing. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about Realty Income's latest quarterly results. They just released their first quarter results a few days ago, and there is some good, there is some bad, and there is also some ugly. But before I get into it, if you could please like this video, it will help me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you very much. So the good news here is that Realty Income got off to a great start in 2023. They beat expectations because they were able to acquire a lot more properties than they had anticipated. In the first quarter alone they bought 1.7 billion worth of assets and these acquisitions also occurred at higher cap rates than they had anticipated. The average cap rate of these acquisitions was 7%. This compares very favorably to the 5-6% cap rates that they've been getting in recent years and then on top of that they also issued some debt with a high 4 low 5% interest rate and so they're still able to earn a nice 200 basis point spread on their new acquisitions. So this is good news because it shows the market that Realty Income is still able to grow accreditively by buying more properties. And after these strong results, they now also hiked their guidance for acquisitions in 2023 from 5 billion to 6 billion. But now comes the bad news. I fear that Realty Income is slowly becoming a jack of all trades. It's too big, its market cap is over 40 billion now, and so it's not able to focus on one specific niche anymore. It has to invest across lots of different property types. Over the past quarters, it has bought a casino, dental offices, convenience stores, some vertical farms and lots of other different property types and so it's losing the focus that it used to have on retail net lease properties that were leased to investment grade tenants. Just a few years ago Realty Income would still earn 50% of its NOI from investment grade rated tenants. Today this is down to 40% and as it keeps expanding in all these different property sectors I fear that this is going to keep coming down. Realty Income is now losing its focus and it's becoming a jack of all trades. This is something that I typically don't like to see from REITs. I would much rather have my REITs specialize in one specific niche of the property market, become experts at it, develop competitive advantages, and Realty Income is unfortunately going the opposite way at the moment. I think that this is simply because of the size of the REIT. It has been very successful in the past, but now it's really big. It has a 40 billion market cap. It has to buy billions of assets every year. This is very challenging, of course, because there's only so many deals out there and so it has to keep expanding in these other property sectors in which it may not have any competitive advantages. And now comes the ugly. Despite being off to a great year, hiking its guidance, Realty Income is still guiding to grow its FFO per share by just 1.7% in 2023. This is rather disappointing in my opinion because many of its peers in the net lease property sector are able to grow at a lot faster rate. Vichy Properties has guided to grow by 10% this year. Essential Properties really Realty Trust has guided to grow by 6% and there are plenty of other REITs that have guided to grow a lot faster than Realty Income. I'll put a chart somewhere on the screen so you can see the expected growth rates of various net lease REITs and it's very clear here that Realty Income is underperforming its peer group. Here you might ask yourself, how come these other net lease REITs are able to grow so much faster than Realty Income? It really comes down to two things. Firstly, many of these other net lease REITs have larger rent escalations in their leases. So EPRT as an example has 2% rent hikes in most of its leases. Realty Income only has 1% on average. This year is guiding to grow its same property revenue by 1.25%. Then on top of that, some of these net lease REITs also have CPI adjustments in their leases, allowing them to grow their rents even faster. So WP Carry, as an example, has CPI-based rent increases in its leases in most cases. And so now that inflation is high, its rents are growing by 3 to 4%. There are some caps, so the, the rent hikes are not unlimited, but they're still growing a lot faster than those of realty income, which are fixed at 1% in most cases. And then the second reason why these rates are growing faster is because they're a lot smaller in size, and so new acquisitions really 
really move the needle for them. A REIT like Essential Properties Realty Trust doesn't have to find as many acquisitions because it's about 10 times smaller than realty income. It could acquire 10 times less properties and still have similar results from its acquisitions. What this means is that these smaller REITs can be a lot more selective and really just focus on those acquisitions that really move the needle that are highly accretive to FFO per share. Now the fact that realty income is growing slower than its peers does not necessarily make it a poor investment opportunity but the reality is that even today despite growing a lot slower realty income is priced at a small premium relative to its peers. Vici properties, essential properties realty trust, several other of its peers are priced at small discounts to realty income and so you get them at a lower valuation with a faster growth rate, a higher dividend yield and so for these reasons I don't think that realty income is the best option in peer group today. But having said all of that we still own a small position in realty income in our retirement portfolio at High Yield Landlord. We still think that this REIT makes a lot of sense for conservative income oriented investors who want steady monthly dividend payments that are safe and growing over time. But if you're looking to maximize total returns then there are probably other options out there. Now if you want to learn more about realty income please know that I recently met the management team of the company. I filmed an interview with them that I posted on this YouTube channel. I'll put a link somewhere on the screen of this video and Otherwise, if you want to access my entire REIT portfolio, please feel free to join my REIT newsletter for a two-week free trial. I'll put a link in the description of this video below. And again, if you could like this video, subscribe to your channel. It will help me a lot. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.